www.lonnon.org There you will find Custom clothing, accessories Digital products And digital products is ebooks for personal as well as business use And finally evolutionoflondon.store S-T-O-R-E Where you'll find DVDs, games More clothing Much, much more Once you go to that site So at evolutionoflondon.store S-T-O-R-E Check out the company Royalty 9 International They make homemade candles 100% soy wax 12 ounce jars From scented to unscented you, now, the scented candles, you can find frankincense myrrh they make. Uh, very good. I'm burning those as well. Very good quality. Peppermint, jasmine, eucalyptus, rose, just to name a few. Burning time over 35 hours. Burning time. And if you want to place an order, you can email them at royalty 9 International at gmail.com and they will be upgrading their website soon so I will keep you informed on that and you can find them and support them on social media TikTok and Instagram Royalty 9 International Mr. Will he's been a fitness consultant for over 15 years so if you want to book a consultation you email him at health Fitness consultant one at gmail.com. Again, that's health fitness consultant one at gmail.com. So definitely uh, support him that way. And so you can support his merch. www.wjaaccessories.com. Again, that's www.wjaaccessories.com. You'll find custom clothes, accessories, and digital products as well. Music! Cheap Limousine channel on YouTube. He have a whole wide range of different beats. So once you go to his YouTube platform, you will see his other social media sites. So definitely support his brand that way. Like, subscribe, and share to Cheap Limousine channel on YouTube. And continue to train on YouTube, the Greatness 19 channel. That's our educational channel to open up your third eye. Close to 600 shows there, so we have a lot for you to enjoy. And I definitely need you guys to really, and I mention this every week, and I'm going to continue and mention this. I need you guys to definitely subscribe and put the Greatness 19 channel on your social media platform support because again I am being alleged shadow banned so I need your guys to support and it takes your guys to put it out there and also support Mr. Evolution of London that's our excuse me that's our health and wellness channel so definitely we want to get the subscribers up with with that as well so that's Mr. Evolution of London on YouTube and again that's our health and wellness channel DJ Panthro he's an international DJ so I need you guys to go and like subscribe and share to his channel as well uh, he has a YouTube channel and if you want to book for him to come to your venue you can email him at DJ Panthro 519 at gmail.com again that's DJ Panthro P-A-N-T-H-R-O 519 at gmail.com for you to basically have him at your venue. That's the email and that's the way to go. One of the top DJs in Southwestern Ontario. And also you can check him out as I mentioned a little bit through his social media platform, TikTok. You have two TikToks. It's DJ Panther 519 or the, D, uh, the Real DJ Panther. The D-A Real DJ Panther So you'll find that On TikTok as well And also YouTube DJ Panther 519 And also on Instagram DJ Panther 519 
Cindy's place. Check her out for custom clothes, accessories, and ebooks as well. Her website is www.cindysplace.org. Again, that's www.cindysplace.org. So definitely support her brand as well. Now, the Oracle 19 is on all major platforms. We're on iHeartRadio. Spotify for podcasters used to be Anchor Dia Film, now Spotify for podcasters, Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon Music, just to name a few. So we're on all the major platforms, the Oracle 19. So anything I had to mention would be in the description box of the Oracle 19, the Greatness 19 channel, Mr. Evolution of London, both of those is on YouTube, of course. Rumble, Rumble, rumble Rumble.com. Again, you just type in the Oracle 19. You find information there. So definitely support that. And also check information in the description box of that platform. And finally, www.theoracle19radio.com. So again, that's www.theoracle19radio.com. All right, well, we have taken care of the business aspect of things as usual, and I always give my perspective of different topics weekly. Again, it's my opinion slash perspective. And today's topic is how to survive inflation. I got that information from a gentleman uh, that requested that, so you got it. It is here. My perspective of how to survive inflation and again it is a world situation and again I I give my perspective because I'm like you I'm trying to go get it I'm trying to get this money out here I'm trying to do the best I can just like you so you always looking for new ways to survive and I touch base in terms of that throughout uh, the years of this platform here, but you have to listen to it. I, but again, I'm just giving my perspective. I'm not no rich person and a uh, professional or an uh, analyst. I, again, I'm just giving my basic perspective of how to survive and a little bit of how I survive. So take it as, a, as you want. Now, again, we all know here in North America, food. Let's get right to it. Food. These supermarkets is making money hand over fist, keeping the prices high, and making the money. And and truth be told, the quality of the food is not the greatest. It looks good when you walk into the supermarket, but it's not the best. A lot of times we buy these fruits and vegetables and it lasts for, you know, a couple of days and it goes bad. Or sometimes it's bad when you even purchase it. And they spray it with pesticides to make it look like fresh and new. But we all know a lot of these foods from the supermarkets are trash so and overpriced. So you really have to hunt and gather to find the best quality foods and then at a reasonable rate. But here's the thing. You, we as individuals, sometimes we have to put our pride down. And what do I mean by that? Is we have to really be on survival mode. I I really believe that us citizens really have to put us, we have to have a mindset of survival mode. Anything goes. We have to get food how we get it to survive, to support us and our families. So here it goes. I think number one, if let's say you're not driving, okay, find out a, a person that is driving. But let's backtrack. 
whatever city, state, province, country you reside, find out the closest farms in your area, farms that you could go to to purchase food directly from the farm. Whether it's uh, dairy farms or meat farms or vegetable farms, go and Google the closest farm in your region and start mapping out going there. And you might have to be in a group or if you're not driving, find out a person that is willing to drive you out there and tell them the benefits, him or her, the benefits of going out to the farm. There's places where you can get fresh meat directly to the farm in bulk. Instead of getting one pack of ground turkey that you have to pay between 6 to $10, you go into a local farm or outside of your state or whatever and buy it in bulk. There's, you can get, I know I, a while back I bought a box of turkey, ground turkey, a, like a, I guess 12 by 12 by 12 type of box. Pretty big supply of gr- just ground turkey and I paid like $30. And that ground turkey is equivalent to about 10 packs, about, I don't know, let me rephrase that, about 20 packs of ground turkey. And if you break it down, it's way cheaper. Now, I have a freezer as well, so I was able to store and it's fresh. I don't have to worry about it. See, at, directly at the farm, they make it in their factory, and then they put it in their store, and it's ready for me. Where if that same ground turkey is from the farm to, let's say, on a truck, into a warehouse, a big warehouse, and then... A supermarket buys it, bring it to their store, and then it sits another week while they repackage it. And then by by the time it gets to me, it's already 30 days old. Where if I'm going directly to the farm, as soon as they actually dismember the turkey itself is being processed within a day or two or whatever and it's it's only about a couple days old not even but let's say a couple days old so which is better a couple days old or 30 days and if you buy in bulk you don't have to worry about buying it for a while right especially if you have a, a large family so you got to think of things as practical. Also, the benefit of it, if you're going by a group, driving to the farm, you all can split the money. So let's say you get a big box of ground turkey for $30 in that big box, that one box, and you splitting it with your guys or individual. And so you're only paying like $15 Maybe you have to give a little shoot the the person that's driving you a little bit of money, you know, for their gas. But overall, it's more logical and practical, and you save and it's more healthier for you. So that's just an example of going to the farm for meats. You can apply that to dairy or a vegetable farm, but you should start looking at different farms going directly to the source. This will help you within your budget. Now, again, I know a lot of you individuals don't have freezers. But that's something maybe you need to invest. Spend the $500 to $1,000 for a good freezer. And I know you might can't afford it now. But in the future, you might want to invest in a good freezer. 
Therefore, you can store more food and in turn save more money at the end of the day. Sometimes you have to spend money to, for it to be profitable for you overall, especially when it comes to dealing with this inflation. So that's overall you got to, is a case by case situation. I don't know about your finances and I know it's hard. I get it. But you have to navigate through this system sometimes and invest for the greater good. So that's just one is carpooling to go to the farms on, on your days off to invest in those things. And nowadays there's different uh, websites, different apps that you could look to where farms, you uh, certain farms, you can pick up food from the farm and it'll be delivered to your house. So you have to look into that. Also, go and Google that because certain farms will deliver food, I should say. Deliver food to your home. I know I had a company, I purchased garlic. They had, and I like uh, black garlic personally because black garlic, I ran out actually. Need to buy more of uh, black garlic because they it's very good for your your blood uh, it's just it has a lot of benefits black garlic it, it's it's uh something to look to garlic in general is very good especially when you um cut it up and then you you mix it with tea i think i might do that today actually make uh put a little garlic in one of my teas that I'm going to make. So I'm a tea drinker anyway. Green tea, peppermint tea, lemon tea, the actual lemon, um, golden seal. Uh, these are things that I mentioned that you should have. And if you check out my ch channel, Mr. Evolution of London, I talk about different products that you can take for your overall health. And this is all part of your inflation because, again, this is survival mode. You also need to take care of your body as well as you're working and grinding. So this all is put together. It, it coincides with each other. So you have to look into that. This is all part of survival, how to survive within the inflation, believe it or not. But anyway, back to... The topic, yes, farms is your friend. You really need to start looking into that, finding out if they will be willing to deliver and pay the little extra money because you're getting in bulk. And if you don't have a, a refri oh, excuse me, a freezer, then you have to deal with your refrigerator, of course. But look into investing farms and getting products sent to you or going out there personally. Also, I would say your local food banks. Look, you can, I know you for just a family of three or four, you can easily per week, easily spend three to four hundred dollars on food. Because easily because when you factor in certain things like cleaning supplies, paper towel, toilet tissue, that right there, like paper towel, if you get in like a 30 pack, you can eat, that's like 20 to $25 for the big jumbo packs. That could be paper towel or toilet tissue. So right then and there, if you get one of each, you already spent $50. $50 is pretty much gone. And then if you're talking about cleaning supplies, because weekly you always need to stock up on cleaning supplies realistic, realistically, even if when you have a family. Being as it may, you have a family. You, that's like $50 right there. So now you're talking $100 on just cleaning supplies and and a toilet tissue paper towel. So right there, you just blew $100 right there. And you really didn't even get all the essentials yet. So when you factor in juices or, or meats or, you know, just uh, bread and 
other, you know, even pastries if you, you know, snacks for the family. Easily, easily, you know I'm not lying, easily $200 close to. So again, depending on the size of your family, I will say on in the range $200 to $400 a week, realistically, you could spend easy. So... And because even the cleaner supplies at the dollar stores, they're not a dollar. You know, we all know that. A lot of them is a dollar twenty-five, dollar fifty. Some is a clean supplies three dollars, four dollars. Well, I thought this was a dollar store. No, it, it just say dollar store. That that's what it used to be. Everything a dollar and under. Now is a dollar and over. There's you go to a dollar store. There's Items that is four dollars, five dollars. But again, I thought this was a dollar store. So farewell to that. So when you go there, you have to spend money. So again, even and forget the supermarkets that have their clean supplies. We already know their prices. If you get a a, a garbage bags like a hundred pack. You're paying like close to $20 for that. The big black hefty bags. $15, $20 after taxes. So just to show you how money goes. So again, surviving. How to survive within this inflation. This recession or slash depression that we in. You really have to hunt and gather. That's why that's why I'm alluding to with food banks. The food banks that you attend or find out, you that can help subsidize how much you're spending. And you cannot be ashamed to go there because you have to put your mind in a survival mode. Look at the city, town, province where you reside and look at your local churches or food banks and go and get yourself food. Now, I, I understand. See, I see the stats with that. I read up on, on information on that. And it's been an increase in food banks because the price of food. And that can help, you know, when you go to food banks throughout your city and, and then on top of that, you're getting food. You're saving yourself a lot of money. Again, that's just another way. You can easily Google your local church or where you reside and find out if they offer, you know, they have food banks and and get yourself some food. Again, you're in survival mode and you have a family or even if you're an individual, you have to get it. You have to go get it however you can. So that's another one. So I mentioned farms. I mentioned food banks. And again, I know this is painstaking and I don't like doing it personally. But the coupons you get in the, uh, delivered in your mail uh, for discounts with uh, certain items, utilize it. Pay attention to it. I I'm guilty of that. I don't pay attention to that. I look at just junk. And I just throw it in the garbage. But you really need to look at it. Because those little discounts and coupons that you can get can save you some dollars when you go to the store and and take it in. So that is another thing you can do to soften the blow in terms of food and there's different uh you go and google and you can you can check out different sites on coupons for different supermarkets there's there's information out there i'm not particularly sure of which ones but it was told to me before but i forgot i'm i don't utilize it which i know i should because it could save me money so you, you can utilize the coupons that you get in the mail 
four different supermarkets to save yourself money. That's long story short with that. Again, this is all part of surviving inflation. How to survive. Because again, my personal opinion, government don't really care about you. You know, they just want you to pay your taxes and that's it. And they, yeah, they'll give you a couple little ends me. But that's not something that will have you survive or make you, or just, it, it won't be something for you to survive off of long term. So I definitely, you need to survive on your own. That's another little tidbit for you in terms of surviving inflation in terms of food. There's a lot of different little things, but you also, you, there's people that, and you might have to take it back to the olden days where our grandparents and great-grandparents. There's people that I call, I say the black market, that cook food. And they cook food in bulk. And you can get meals prepared. And they're good at what they do. And you can save yourself money that way. It's, that's a little tricky though. But there's people that will cook your big pot of spaghetti for three days or whatever. And you can... You know, you might pay them like uh, $30 or something and you get a, enough for three or four days. Big pot. I'm just using that as an example. It depends on the region where you reside. But there are people... See, going back to those days, uh, trade. People trading, you know, food and stuff. But... Again, people's doing that now. I find it more and more. They they cooking, they great cooks. Instead of going to a restaurant and you're spending for that same spaghetti, you might spend just for a plate now. You're spending thirty dollars just for a plate. You have Joe that is that could cook you a big pot pot for thirty days. I mean, sorry, not thirty days, three days, and. That could last you three days, of course. And it's better food and it's fresher food. Rather give Joe $30 for that. And it could last 30, uh, th- why am I saying 30 days? Three days. Versus going to the restaurant and spending that same $30 plus tips just for a small plate. Inflation, survival. So you, you have to pay attention to where you live and who your neighbors are and what the city, the, the, the town where you reside, uh, just the area and who, who does what. You got to network. As a guy used to tell me, make friends, talk to people, because a lot of people have different talents. You, you just can't just not say anything to people. You got to be out there networking because you don't know who can cook. Who who owns maybe that supermarket or variety store. They, you, you don't know. You might be making friends with a person that owns a variety store so you can get discounts from foods. Or you don't know who who's who, who owns the supermarket. A person may be working in the supermarket, supervising. They can give you food on the low and or discount or whatever. You don't know. You just got to be out there. Networking. Networking is the key. And that's going to help you in terms of survival. Networking is very important. Going in and communicating, meeting, making friends and stuff, making alliances, I should say. It's not about friendship, but alliances with people. I've been guilty of that for a long time. Didn't really go out for, you know, just making alliances, I should say. I just like, a lot of times we keep to myself, but 
now I'm, I make more alliances with people. And then I'm able to get hookups with food and and stuff. That's one thing I, I, I got that on lock where I can make alliances. I've been blessed on that aspect. So you should do the same. This, and food is very important in terms of surviving. And even with the inflation, a lot of people drive. Yes, so everyone knows that the cost of gas is crazy. Now, you have a car. You need to think, I, in my personal opinion, on more of a business aspect. Now, if you're working, maybe you can link up with individuals that is not... Well, let me say this again. If you have a car, you work in, of course, you can link up with co-workers that is not working. I mean, what am I saying? What am I saying, Mr. Grace? That is not driving. Get it right, Mr. Grace. That is not driving. I have so many things in my head. That's why... I, Sometimes I'm babbling. But just walk with me. It's okay. It, I just, again, I will make the point. It will come. It, you need to align yourself with the non-drivers at your workplace. And y'all can carpool. And let's say they pay you $10 or, or let's say $20 a week. And you have... Three passengers. Guess what? I mean, that's sixty dollars in your pocket. And if you times it by four weeks, that's two hundred forty dollars that can go towards your gas. And you're just taking people home from work, or picking them up and and, and taking them, you know, round trip. If you so choose to, that will help cut costs. If you're getting $240 a week, I mean, it's $240 a month, that can, that can uh, help your finances, right? So, I would definitely, if I was you, I would look into that. All, all a part of inflation. This is all dealing with inflation. Learning to survive. You in survival mode. Start putting yourself in survival mode. That's going to help you. So, yes. No question about it. I will definitely, me personally, I would definitely look into that if I was you. You have a car, make it work for you. Driving people to and fro certain destinations and you can pick up money here and there. It's a big help towards paying for your gas. So that that's another thing. And if, let's say, you want to save money, if you have to drive to work... You have to do what you have to do. But if you have a, a job that's not that far, you might just want to ride your bike and leave your car at home. That's saving gas right there. You don't have to worry about that. That's cutting costs. I know a lot of people prefer to have bikes and they prefer just to drive because people's lazy, so forth, so on, and I, I get it to a certain degree, but this is, you have to learn to survive. Personally, I think the car, carpooling would be ideal for you, where you can make some extra money, but if not, then invest in getting a bike, and if you have one, you might want to utilize that. Or you might want to utilize uh, purchasing a, a scooter, an e-scooter, e-bike, which is running on electric and, and that you can drive around throughout the 
the city limits. That can help you also. So put putt around with an e-bike and that can help you. It's all about survival. So that is another option. So again, we food and gas, those is really the main ones. Uh, people with families, they need uh, a daycare. That's big too because daycare is, is a lot of money. And that's, that's very tricky because it's hard to find a quality babysitter. And it's expensive on top of that. That is tricky. Very tricky. And it's hard to find a quality babysitter. You, you, because people, you don't really know people. And, you know, you have these individuals taking care of your child. And you got to spend a lot of money. Oh, a uh, little bit dicey is a case by case situation. If you're coming from a two parent home and both of y'all individuals, mother and father, have to work, yeah, it's, it's hard. I mean, case by case situation. I don't really have a lot of answers for you. Number one, look at close family, close friends, and work, with, work your way that way. And you have to do a lot of screening. And and to save money, there's not really a lot to get around. You can't really get around that. But, again, the only thing I could tell you is screen and start with family and friends. Because maybe you can save a little bit that way. If not, you got to do what you have to do with that. There's not really much you can uh, circumvent about that part. Because, again, it's a cost with that. But, again, case-by-case situation, you have to do your own due diligence. To not only cut costs, but have a trustworthy person. Uh, and there's... Uh, now, inflation in terms of utility bills... Again, getting light bulbs that that is energy saving. Doing laundry, which is an electrical bill. Doing laundry at night, because that saves some money versus doing your laundry in the daytime. Uh, don't have all your lights on throughout the house that especially you don't need to have on. So you can save that way. So getting energy saved lamps or light bulbs. And also in terms of doing laundry at night versus the day. Save a little change that way. It definitely adds up. Everything do add up. So that's... uh, also that uh, what else it's say in terms of surviving inflation uh, water bills I know certain things you, you you can't really avoid but there's filters that you can get from certain uh appliance stores that you can use to save yourself money uh, in terms of water and how much water you drink or how much water you run you know. but again you need water so there's not really a whole lot you can do with that but it's just being practical and everybody in the house being mindful that's really what it is let's say you you know, you're not going to, you run your your kitchen water, but you're not going to let it run for a half an hour on hot to clean your dishes, that type of thing. You, you, be practical.
The uh, reason why I'm thinking that, because I, I'm just going back to when my, my dad, he used to, sometimes when he's cleaning, washing the dish, he just let the water run for like 15 minutes. Sterili I get it, it's sterilized, but I'm like, to myself, I'm saying, Dad, you seriously? Just, you know, can you cut it down to five minutes? But he'll let that water run if he dish in the sink, he'll, he'll clean it, of course, but he just let it run for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm just maybe exaggerating a little bit, but it seemed like that, 10, 15 minutes, and let it run. And I'm like, why? Why? But anyway, everybody have a little quirks, I guess, so it's here and there, but I just will say with you, with inflation, you have to be practical. So little things can save you a couple pennies, but those pennies add up. So that's my little, little tidbit of the day for how to survive inflation. It's not really much to get around. Oh, I, I should say also save money. Learn saving money. Saving money is very important. How can I forget? That's one of the biggest things in dealing with this inflation. You have to learn to invest more. And there's so many things that you can invest. And you don't have to spend thousands of dollars. Because dealing with this inflation, you also have to have a surplus amount of money to, to handle this. So buying gold and silver bars, commodities, and I know gold, if you buy it by ounces, you know, you might have to pay $2,000, and you might not obviously have that $2,000, but you have money to purchase silver, which is like $40, $50. Uh, there's a company that I know, Silver Gold Bull, B U L L dot C A, and coming from Canada. Uh, the company in Canada, I believe Alberta, where you can purchase gold and silver bars. And why am I asking? Why am I even mentioning this? This is basically part of your future investments. Because I believe everybody, every citizen should have some type of investment savings just in case. Because part of this inflation we in, we really in, the, in my opinion, a recession or even a depression currently in North America. Whether you want to say recession or depression, the economy is jacked up anyway, so you already know. Regular citizens out here know that it's messed up out here in these streets. So saving is very important. Uh, life insurance, uh, and this is a little on the outside note, but this is just part of surviving. Having... Uh, life insurance for you, saved up, uh, set up for your offspring. I think that's very important. You don't want to just, some people look at it differently. I, I always say leave something for the next generation. Some people just say, well, screw the next generation. Let them make their own bones. I, 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 no, I don't believe in that. I, I believe you, you want to set them up for, if they mess it up, that's on them. But you, you want to leave something. You just don't want to leave nothing. And they just got to start from scratch. These is your children. Unless they ungrateful, then mm, that's, that's another situation. But you want to leave uh, some type of foundation. And also, you want to, on the side note, you want to have something just in case you have to dip into it because of this recession. Hopefully you're not, but, or hopefully you don't, but it's all about investing, you know, having like whole life insurance, term, uh, certain real estate, 
in small or large uh, cash savings. Cash savings have always have money in the house. And I would say people will ask what, how much? Realistically, try to start saving and building towards having a couple thousand dollars in your house on just on deck, just reserved, just in case of emergency. I would say even about 10 grand in your house. Cash. Just in case of emergency and you had, uh, uh, it was, a, you have to, a fire in your house or whatever, and you have to stay at a hotel for a month, you have money on deck, or if you had to relocate quick, uh, move to a different state or country or province, you have, you have enough money to move. It, this is just part of dealing in this world that you live in. So I, 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 again, it ties in a little bit to the inflation because it's, all of this is part of surviving. You have to be able to survive in your current situation and you have to be prepared for future situations. Let's say you lose your job. That reserve that you have in your house can help pay for food and, and bills while you're in transition. So that's just my little two cents in. Maybe one day I might just have a topic on just saving money. But anyway, how to survive the inflation? This is it. My perspective, hopefully it can help you. Pass it along to individuals that you think that will need the help. And hopefully it makes sense to you. Thank you for listening. Cheap. 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 Cheap.